While reading some of the commentaries explaining the Quranic verses, both in the Quran and the Hadiths, I was struck by a sentence which was repeated innumerable times proclaiming that such and such an event happened, and then a verse was revealed. Can you explain this? And then it was revealed is a mantra that permeates Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, and Tirmidhi hadiths, as well as Ibn Ishaq's biography of Muhammad, in hundreds upon hundreds of instances. An event had occurred or an action was taken or ordered by Muhammad, for which, afterwards, that is, after the event, a convenient and very appropriate revelation was descended, justifying or explaining it by an indisputable divine decree. In the cases of the Hebrew prophets, they predicted events beforehand, and then these predictions came to be true. This is the essence of prophecy. In Muhammad's case, almost none exist in such a manner, but are invariably prophesied after an event has occurred and in hindsight. The most remarkable, astounding, and disturbing realization that one faces after studying the hadiths, Ibn Ishaq, Sirat Rasulullah, and most of the Maududi analysis of the revealed verses and surahs, is the enormous number of repeated mantras such as, and Allah revealed, or then it was revealed, or then Gabriel revealed, that fill them. In Bukhari hadith alone, there are more than 450 such hadiths. Here are a few of them to enlighten the listeners. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 3.546 narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud. The Prophet said, Whoever takes a false oath to deprive somebody of his property will meet Allah while he will be angry with him. Then Allah revealed, Verily those who purchase a little gain at the cost of Allah's covenant and their oaths. Chapter 3.77 Al-Ash'ath declared, this verse was revealed concerning me. I had a well in the land of a cousin of mine. The Prophet asked me to bring witnesses to confirm my claim. I said, I don't have witnesses. He said, let the defendant take an oath then. I said, oh Allah's apostle, he will take a false oath immediately. Then the Prophet mentioned the above narration and then Allah revealed the verse to confirm what he had said. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.38 narrated by Sahil bin Sa'd, the verse, and eat and drink until the white thread appears to you distinct from the black thread, was revealed, but of dawn was not revealed along with it. So some men, when intending to fast, used to tie their legs one with white thread and the other with black thread, and would keep on eating till they could distinguish one thread from the other. Then Allah revealed, of dawn whereupon they understood that meant the night and the day. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 6.175 narrated by Ibn Abbas, when the verse, if there are 20 steadfast amongst you, they will overcome 200, chapter 8.65 was revealed, then it became obligatory for the Muslims that one Muslim should not flee from 10 non-Muslims. Then there was revealed but now Allah has lightened your task, 8.66. So it became obligatory that 100 Muslims should not flee before 200 non-Muslims. Allah, it seems, did not realize that 20 of the followers of Muhammad could not possibly fight against 200 and win. So he changed his mind to reduce the odds to the more realistic 2 to 1 ratio. From Muslim hadith, here are a few more. Sahih Muslim Hadith 12.12, narrated by Aisha. The Prophet entered my house when a Jewess was with me, and she was saying, Do you know that you would be put to the trial in the grave? The Messenger of Allah trembled on hearing this, and said, It is the Jews only who would be put to trial. Aisha said, We passed some nights, and then the Messenger of Allah said, Do you know that it has been revealed to me you would be put to trial in the grave? Aisha said, I heard the messenger of Allah seeking refuge from the torment of the grave after this. Sahih Muslim Hadith 1317 narrated by Al-Bara ibn Azib. This verse was revealed in this way. Guard the prayers and the Asr prayer. We recited it in this very way as long as Allah desired. Allah then abrogated it 
and changed it to God the prayers and the middle prayer. Sahih Muslim Hadith 1877 narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah. The Apostle of Allah was delivering the sermon on Friday in a standing posture when a caravan from Syria arrived. The people flocked towards it till no one was left with the Prophet but 12 persons. And it was on this occasion that this verse in regard to Jum'ah was revealed. And when they see merchandise or sport, they break away to it and leave thee standing. Sahih Muslim Hadith 4328 narrated by Sa'ad ibn Abul Waqqas. Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad said, My father took a sword from the khums and brought it to the Prophet and said, Grant it to me. He refused. At this Allah revealed the Quranic verse. They asked thee concerning the spoils of war. Say, the spoils of war are for Allah and the Apostle. Chapter 8, verse 1. Almost all of such revelations occurred after an event had transpired or because Muhammad needed a divine justification and sanction for any and all of his requirements, carnal or otherwise. Allah, it seems, from these reports, was ready and waiting at all times to be at Muhammad's beck and call to fulfill any and all of his requests instantly and without any prevarications. Of all the prophets so far recorded, Allah, the God of the pagan Arabs, was most and singularly mindful only of Muhammad's personal needs and requirements. One does not have to be a scholar or a rocket scientist to realize that there is something unusual and unsavory about the fact that Muhammad claimed that all his revelations were divinely inspired when in fact, based upon all the above stories alone, not one of them could have been. Each one of these stories and hundreds more in both the Quran and other hadiths prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they were made to order revelations by Muhammad as and when he needed them. The whole of the Quran is nothing more than Muhammad's own alter ego projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah the supreme pagan rock god of the Quraysh tribe embedded into the corner wall of the Kaaba called the Black Stone. Muhammad, Gabriel, Allah and Satan are one and the same character, Muhammad himself. The most shocking and disturbing realization from all of the above is the certainty that even among the most learned followers of Muhammad, it is impossible for any of them to admit this fact because it would destroy and completely discredit Muhammad his Quran and the whole of Muhammadan Islam.